you can book Disney World's cheapest club level option for under $500 a night. But is it worth it? I am here at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort to find out, and I brought with me a club level newbie. It's a Quage Resort it's Tour. It's a Quage Resort Quage Tour. Resort tour. Quage. Disney's Coronado Springs Resort is a moderate hotel themed after the stylings of Spanish painter Salvador Dali and inspired by Walt Disney's relationship with him. It is the only moderate resort to offer club level and has club level rooms that are hundreds of dollars cheaper than the other Disney concierge option. This is a wonderful hotel. We both, this is a favorite of both of us. Correct. Um, the pricing is more fair than a lot of Disney hotels for amazing offerings. It shocks me that Grand Estino Tower in particular, which is the tower part of Coronado, is not a deluxe. Right. Um, it's absolutely amazing. If you want to see all about Coronado Springs, you can check out my full tour on the channel right now. Today we are focusing on that inexpensive club level option, at least relatively inexpensive. So we're going to see if it's worth it, if it holds up to the others. I stayed at the boardwalk club level, so we're going to find out how those two compare in particular and if this is worth the splurge. And I am a club level newbie, so this is going to be a fresh hot take for you. Fresh hot take. To start, Sage and I are going to head up to uh, the room to take a look at it. Um, I am super pumped. Yep, and and he's in different clothes. <laughs> I, I am in different clothes because what you're about to see is in the past. I think the whole time we were in there, we were saying it was the past. No. We've really, we've really... No, but look, if it's just a that so raven moment here, quick, go into my eye. Go into my eye. <laughs> All right, it's time to check out the room, so... Oh, hey, sorry. Got me watching Bluey. Welcome to my crib. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the deluxe suite at the Coronado Springs. Wow. We are in a Coronado Springs deluxe suite. Sage is staying here tonight, but he let me pop in so that we can check out the room, check out club level, and we're gonna hang out because we're friends. Friendship. Friendship. But deluxe, deluxe, deluxe friendship. friendship. <laughs> But uh, our friendship's first task of the day yeah. is to take you guys around the room. Actually, we've already done stuff together in the video. Time time travel. Oh, yes. Yeah, yes. we're going to do it later, but it's going to be earlier. Because Welcome of to the future. Yeah. The past? past? Anyway, so this is the, the front of the room where we'll start with. We've got the door here. Thank you, Vanna. Very nice door. It's got your standard Disney door stuff. Room occupied sign, very important. We should probably put that on the door <laughs> so someone doesn't come in and we're just like, hey. <laughs> um, standard Disney door locks. This is the like magic band scanner, but you've also got your bar lock and there is a deadbolt down here as well. Evacuation room, people, if you need it. Right by the door, we have our first bathroom. Yes, first bathroom. There are multiple. This bathroom is like just a little half bath. Nice mirror. I really love this wallpaper. I like want this bathroom in my house. Um, cool sink. And this woman with a, a dandelion as her head. So this art is going to be similar to the art that you find in the Dahlia Lounge. It's all that same kind of uh, combination between Walt Disney and... Salvador Dali. Salvador Dali, oh. thank you. Mm, and there. by the way, this did not think this bathroom had a door. It does have a door. It does have a door and it is a door that locks. Oh, yeah. There is a little latch. Try, try to open it. What's that? Can't get it, can you? <laughs> All right, we're headed into the room proper now. We've got this triple mirror so you can see us do this. And then... I've always wanted to be a part of one of those. <laughs> and then we've got our room proper now. We are in a room that does have a connecting door. So if you want to get two rooms that connect, that is an option at Coronado Springs and the tower. Um, we've got this very beautiful art piece. Yeah, but this is really, this is really cool. This is like really different, um, which I think in general, this hotel has kind of an artsy skew, so it makes sense. Um, but this is your main sort of living space in this suite. We've got our TV, um, which is the Samsung smart TVs. These are awesome. Um, it is way bigger of a perk to have a smart TV in your room than not because you can cast from your phone. You're not limited to cable. You can cast anything off of your device onto these TVs, which I love. There's a nice bench here. So there's actually a ton of seating in this room. Standing lamp here in the corner. This um, coffee table that to me looks like the pear phone in iCarly. Kind of a deep cut. <clears throat> or the pear from Veggie Tales, if you're familiar. Or the pear from Veggie Tales. It's just a very pear shaped coffee table. We've got a couch here, and I have been sitting on this couch, and it's comfortable, but we'll do some official couch science. Couch science time. It's good. 
It feels like a couch in someone's living room. Yeah, it sunk in at first. Yeah, it's almost a. It's not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's memory foam esque, but it definitely like it's 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 shaping it's yeah. shaping my tush a bit. Yeah, and it's it's fabric. It's not like that weird. I really hate that weird plasticky kind of pleather material that you get mm -hmm. in hotels sometimes. It, this is a fabric couch. I like it a lot. It's also got throw pillows which I think is a very homey touch. Let's talk windows. We've got a bunch of windows in here. So in this main space, you've got two windows. They are not like the whole wall. You'll see they're actually a little like smaller windows than you would typically see, but you get a lot of them. They have little Mickeys in them, which I love and I forgot to take a picture of. And then uh, we have a view of the parking lot, which isn't the best view you can get in Disney World, but this is a moderate hotel. So we're getting a pretty large room for uh, cheaper than one of these rooms would cost at some of those hotels with better views. And there are better views at Coronado Springs. The view types just might cost you a little bit more. Of course, if you want light to come in, you can have your windows open. The curtains here are privacy curtains, which is great because we are looking out on those pathways. So you can close those, still get some light in. Or if you're taking a nap in here, then you could close the blackout curtains, which do close all the way. I'm just bad at working curtains to get it much darker. I think you're great at working curtains. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Um, <laughs> but these have a nice design that kind of matches the rest of the room. And you might nap in here because one, the couch is pretty comfortable. And two, this is a sofa bed, which we will pull out in a second with a redecorating montage. Little side table, which is awesome. And then over here, we've got our little coffee area. So every important recycling bin and trash can. Then you've got a, a three shelf, three tiered coffee unit here. The top shelf actually has decorative vases on it, which is not something you see a lot in Disney hotel rooms, but I think is a really nice touch. Again, another thing that makes this uh, suite feel a little more homey. Ice bucket with some cups, both hot and cold cups, and your Keurig with plenty of K cups that you can of course get replenished and any accoutrements you might need for your coffee. Down here, we've got our fridge. Um, it's on the large side. This is one of the bigger much bigger fridges that I've seen, which makes sense. This is a larger room. Um, it has my water Who bottle put in it. Dasani water in my deluxe hotel room. I did. It's like you don't even know. <laughs> I, it, it was a it was a little secret for you to find. Oh, thanks. Easter egg. This hotel does kind of have a business skew with the convention center. We'll talk a lot more about that later, but because of that, you'll see some pretty functional workspaces in all of the hotel rooms, especially in Grand Estino Tower. Um, I love this like wooden mirror situation. I think that's super cool. Then you've got a table here that could serve as like an eating table or a desk uh, that two people can work at. Sage and I have actually been working in here for like an hour and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hours, yeah. yeah. Um, when you check in, we were given our map. And then we were also given our Kronos Club guide uh, at the concierge check-in. This tells you all about some of the rules of the concierge lounge, as well as some of the offerings, the story of the lounge, um, and what times that food and beverage is going to be offered, which is, of course, probably the most important part. Next up, we've got a nice lamp here that does have plugs, both USB and regular. There's plenty of USB and regular plugs around the room. And there's this sideboard table that has drawers in it. Um, so if you're working here for a few days, you can kind of get settled. Phone and phone safety and fee information. These really nice chairs. These are nice. Yeah, oh, they're they're textured with this design. It's not just like plastered on there. It's yeah. nice and leather. Um, it's, and honestly, we sat down there for a while. Yeah, it was comfy. It was comfy. I yeah. Um, we also have Hey Disney in this room. Hey Disney is Disney's partnership with Amazon um, and it uses Amazon Alexa. It is a voice assistant. They are coming to Disney hotel rooms everywhere slowly but surely. So you may or may not see them in your hotel room, but I think they're mostly out now. Um, with these guys, they do start muted when you arrive at your room. So they are not listening to you. If you are uncomfortable with this, which I know a lot of people are, I see it in our comments, you can access the plug. The plugs are accessible everywhere. Just leave them unplugged for the time you're here if that's something you're more comfortable with or leave them muted or turn them on and talk to them. They can tell jokes. They can tell stories. Little kids, I think, would really love some of this stuff. My favorite thing they have is the Disney soundscapes. They do have a Coco one, which just brings joy to my heart. But that's Hey Disney. Next up, we've got the bedroom. Yeah. yeah. Big sliding bar and door to maximize space in the room. And you do have a king bed in this room. I love a king bed. Yeah. I like to flail in my sleep <laughs> dramatically. Five pillows on the bed, but there are extra pillows and you can request as many pillows as you want. Although five is a lot of pillows. I really love this headboard. It's beautiful. It looks carved. Oh, um, I should say something. Uh, two weeks ago, they called and they were like, hey, do you have any special requests? Because being a part of club level, which we'll talk about in a little bit, um, or maybe we already did because this is the past. And the future. The future. And the past. Um, in the past. 
Uh, thanks, Raven. Um, so, uh, they did ask what I, like, if I had any special accommodations. You requested more pillows? I, I did, because Shannon, who will join us later on this evening, she has to have a lot of pillows. And the other thing that I requested, which they do have, uh, either bassinets or pack and plays, which the pack and play is somewhere around here. I don't know where it is, but they did provide one, and it'll be around here somewhere. But I did request the extra pillows. <laughs> Amazing. So you won't have five pillows unless you request it. <laughs> or maybe you will. But uh, we've got reading lights in the beds. This is one of my favorite things about uh, newer and refurbished Disney rooms is these reading lights in the bed. Because if you are staying with someone who might not stay up as late as you, you can use these reading lights. Um, Emma and I stay together quite often. Emma goes to bed a lot earlier than I do. So having those like spotlights is great. Although she wears an eye mask anyway. So... I can do whatever I want and she would have no idea. Hence the flailing. Hence the flailing. <laughs> we also have side tables. There's one on each side. They're exactly the same size, which is great. Sometimes you see smaller side tables on one side of the bed. Three drawers here, each of them about the same size, like that. And the lamps do have more of those outlets. Uh, so it's easy to charge your devices. Another window in here on the small side, but does also have a Mickey. Got accent wall over here with the TV. There's another Samsung smart TV. So if you are staying with two separate groups in this hotel and want to watch two different things or whatever, you can. There's two Samsung smart TVs in the different rooms. Also this bench, which again, something that I would put in my house. That's nice. Yeah, did we talk about the benches in front of that TV? Show? I think I did. Yeah, but it's great for extra seating. It pulls out. Yeah. Uh, we're, uh, later on, uh, I have other friends staying in different um, Coronado areas and we like to have a little game night. So these benches are awesome to put around the coffee table or whatever we're going to do and play cards against humanity. Parcheesy? Or, yes, parcheesy. Yeah, I thought it would be parcheesy. <laughs> <laughs> then this side of the room, we've got another side table. This side table does have yeah. another phone so you don't have to get out of bed to answer your phone. Um, and it has a TV remote for the Samsung Smart TV. Then we move on to kind of our storage closet space here. Two full length mirrors so that you can see us do this from two different angles. Um, when you come in, your closet will likely look like this, where you've got sort of these open cubbies where you can see Sage and I have our so items. We, yeah, I love those computers. <laughs> That's true. There will not be two laptops, unfortunately. And Quincy's old coffee. And, and my and pita chips. Let me just, I'll just... <laughs> That's my bag. But you have plenty of storage space here in the bedroom for your items. You've got an in-room safe that you can program. And then two more drawers down here, both about the same size. These are on the smaller side, but I think there's plenty of storage space in this room. The this... Uh, mirror is another sliding door, which is where you'll find all the Sage's stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Oops. I Sorry. forgot it was in there. <laughs> um, got extra pillow and blanket here, plenty of hangers, Sage's clothes for his gig tonight. I, I have to go to a gig, so. <laughs> um, And robes, robes are robes. You do not see robes all the time in Disney hotels, especially not in moderate Disney hotels. Um, that is a perk here in Grenestino Tower with that club access. Love it. They're not branded robes. They don't have like Coronado Springs robes, but any robe is a good robe, mm -hmm. in I'm, my opinion. I'm a big fan of robes, especially yeah. for standing in a club level room. Uh, just it, it emphasizes the um, luxury. Yeah, agreed. We've got an ironing board here, as well as your steam iron down on the ground. Those are Sage's bags and his cough drops. Um, <laughs> and then we've got um, a little luggage rack here if you would like to use it. What are you doing? It's my crib. <laughs> there is another bathroom. We've got the master bathroom here. Right when you enter, you've got plenty of towels on the side. Another sliding door. There aren't really any regular doors in this hotel room to make it easier. Um, huge sort of vanity area with plenty of counter space, two sinks. I think this is an amazing spot to get ready. It's very well lit, um, which is so cool. Huge mirror. You've got toiletries, including body lotion, mouthwash, shower cap, vanity kit, and bath soap down here with this lovely tile. The sinks are pretty sizable, um, not like crazy large, but plenty sizable. And then we've got some tissue as well. Below the sinks, there's two cabinets. Both of them serve as great storage space with a lot of empty space in there. But the right one has your hair dryer as well as extra tissue if you need it. Then of course, there are some more towels on the shelving in the middle. Then we've got more towels and uh, of course, with this big mirror, you can see me do this, and Sage is missing it, but you know, that's what- Sorry, I was doing, I'm doing robe signs. Here we go. Get back to my spot. Yeah, what are you, okay. Um, and we have a makeup mirror. I love the makeup mirrors because they look really silly when you go like this. <laughs> the shower is on the opposite side of the room here. Now the shower and the bathroom are in separate rooms, which means you do have a good amount of privacy, uh, but if you are sharing this room and 
Wait, well, there's a whole other bathroom actually. I was just gonna say you would have to pass by this glass door shower to head to the toilet room if you needed to. However, there's also the other bathroom you could use. So not really too much of an issue. Got your bath mat hanging on the shower door. Shower door swings out. Plenty of hooks to hang your towels. Note to help conserve uh, water by reusing your towels. In the shower, we've got a cubby hole for any of your toiletries. These refillable Disney toiletries, body wash, conditioner, and shampoo. It is just like a standing shower, so of course no tub in this room. Tile in the wall, dual shower head, a waterfall style wide shower head, and then one that you can lift and move around. And you have a clothesline in here as well, plus your water controls. Finally, we're gonna go in the final room. Welcome to the newest addition to the All This Room Tour. It's called Robe Science. Now, as you can see, the robe, it, uh, it's really actually soft on the inside, but it's, it's great for the outside because in case, you know, it's like a little bit of waterproof. And for longer people, like giants like me, it doesn't really cover the whole kind of situation. But overall, it's a comfy robe. I would, I like, add it from like a one to 10. I'd say it's probably about a seven because it is comfy, but one size does not fit all. Mm, fair enough. Wasn't expecting this, but I like it. Uh, we have a commode room, another of those sliding doors, regular, just really not much going on in here. It's pretty spacious, so that's good. Um, and you've got another nice art print here as well that matches the theme of the hotel. And that is the Coronado Springs Deluxe Studio. So uh, unfortunately, that's the fun part. No, wait, there's a fun part that I almost forgot. What? Bed science. Oh, yes. Yeah, we gotta do bed science. All right, ready? It's my first bed science. Yeah, do you wanna do, help me with the jingle? Oh, there's a jingle? Yeah, there's a jingle. All right, I'll be boxed. Okay. <laughs> Coronado Springs, bed science with Quincy and Sage. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right. It's good. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I like the jingle with, wait a minute. I think that, I think that, I think that I'm having like a, this feels like a moderate hotel bed. Right. And this doesn't feel like a moderate hotel, even though it is. Right. So I think that that's what's happening. Still, it's a classic Disney bed. Right mix between soft and firm. I'd say on the firmer side in this case. Correct. I mean, I would, that's what, that's why, that's what, what, my, what my pause was about. I was expecting something a little more luxurious because everything else, again, we're staying club level. Yeah. We've got this amazing studio. Yeah. And it's just like a little firmer than I anticipated. It's not terrible. Yeah. I, w I would say that it just doesn't feel like a luxury bed. It feels mm -hmm. like a nice hotel bed. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? We've acquired pillows. Um, the verdict, these are good pillows. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting because the comparison, so the pillows go along with the luxury of the club level mm -hmm. Coronado. Mm -hmm. But it's funny, the balance of like actually nice soft pillows to kind of the firmer bed is yeah. throwing me off a bit. I love all Disney pillows. Disney has these pillows that are on the softer side that I think are just really like high quality pillows. I literally own them at my house. And these are those, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're like just, they're soft while still being supportive. Mm -hmm. Emma likes firm pillows, does not love Disney pillows. So they're not for everybody if you're a firm pillow person, you're not going to love these, but definitely good pillows contrasting with the bed, but I think would be a comfortable sleeping experience. And I'm so picky. Sometimes, even though I order more pillows, I still bring a pillow from home because you, you know, you just want to be comfortable in your space. <laughs> uh, we have our best nights to do, but to get to it, we have to do a redecorating montage. <laughs> Sage immediately has thoughts and feelings. Okay, I love, I don't want to be too backlit. I want to make sure you see. <laughs> um, I love a bed next to a window. I don't know what that is, but it makes like, I love being able, like at night what yeah. I'm doing is because we are on the fourth floor, uh, but we are still facing, uh, we are still facing the parks, which Hollywood Studios is right there. And Epcot is that way, which if you time it right, you might be able to see. I, I don't know. I've never never tried the fireworks from the fourth floor before. Yeah. Uh, but you can see all the fireworks from the rooftop of the Dahlia Lounge, which we'll, I assume we'll visit later, maybe. Perhaps. Okay. Um, uh, but I love sitting, uh, sitting next to a window. I would open up these. I would just enjoy, like, the view and maybe the fireworks. But I love, even though it's a couch bed, I would love 
a, a, a window next to a bed. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we've got our sofa bed here. This is a classic sofa bed. A couple things I don't love about that. Disney has come up with some pretty exciting sofa bed concepts, in my opinion, in some of their rooms. You can see them in some of my other hotel tours that involve a little less uh, redecorating. So we have six cushions that we now have to have a place for when this bed is open. If you have um, like two separate bed needs in this room, you leave this bed open the whole time. These cushions are just going to be out and about, kind of in your space. It's a huge room, though, so it's not the end of the world. However, what I will say, uh, as opposed to other sofa beds, there's a lot of space underneath. And so I feel like that... You could put the, you could put the cushions you down there, put, for put sure. The cushions down there. That one's so not going to work. Nope. Well, uh, I lied. <laughs> the bigger ones, though, the definitely bigger. could. Yeah, we've or the, the the Yeah. So this is the sofa bed. Um, now we have to do the the sofa bed science, which, as a, as a newbie to sofa bed science... Safety first. Oh, absolutely. We do it very slowly. All right, gen gentle. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, my that's, gosh. That's a sofa bed, all right. Wow. Yeah, it's a... Uh, I it's, pity the fool. Yeah, it feels... It's not like cardboard, but it is kind of like a thin layer of foam is sort of the vibe. It's not comfy. No, not at all. Now, that said, if your friends are like, hey, we're staying in a deluxe suite and you can have the sofa bed if you want. It's great. It's yes. so comfy. The answer is yes. It's, it's amazing. Like, and, and honestly, like if I was splitting this room with friends, I would not have a problem sleeping on the sofa bed. I would have a problem with my back probably at the end of the trip. Yeah. But... I think it's something you do short term and definitely yeah. not long term if possible. Like or if put your kids on it. Yeah. Put your kids on. They've got some backs that have been damaged. Yeah, their by backs are life's like, cruel. Yeah, just put the kids on it. Um, <laughs> this is definitely, yeah, this is a, a firm, 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 thin, thin, thin mattress. Mm -hmm. um, but gets the capacity of the room up, so, you know. But mad props uh, to putting it next to a window because yeah. this is. This is nice. It's yeah. Staring at the stars. Yeah. He lives in you. All right. So we are going to talk about the less fun part of a room tour, which is the pricing, of course. Um, unfortunately, something you have to deal with when you want to stay in a nice room like this. So this room is a tower deluxe suite with club level access. Uh, it is not the cheapest club level room you can get. You can also get a standard club level room too. This is one level higher than that standard club level room. Now those standard club level rooms do start at $450 per night, which is incredibly inexpensive for Disney World club level. If you want to see what that standard room looks like, you can see it in my full Coronado Springs tour that's on the channel right now. I did stay in one of those standard Grandestino tower rooms. This room starts at around $700 per night and can go up to around $1,400 per night. Those prices do depend on room type, view type, and date. So this is a pretty expensive room. $700 a night is nothing to scoff at. I think to do it, you are probably going to want to look at splitting it if that is not the kind of splurge that you're used to. Um, that said, you can also always look for special offers. Special offers pop up on the Disney website all the time. And even if you've already booked, if a special offer pops up after you book, you can then add that special offer to your reservation by giving Disney a call. So always keep an eye out for special offers, which you can either do by checking the special offers page on the Disney website or just keeping an eye on allears.net and the allears.net socials, where we always will post about any new hotel offers to make sure you're saving as much money as possible. And that's the room. Anything else to add? Uh, I'm super excited to be here for the night. I'm actually saying the next two nights. Um, I will let you know how it goes. Now, Emma and I recently did a stay in the club level garden rooms over at Disney's Boardwalk uh, Inn Resort. We had a really nice time. We asked you guys if you would want to see more at club level, especially this more inexpensive option here at Coronado Springs. You said yes, so here we are. All right, now that we've seen the room, which looks pretty awesome, we're gonna talk a little bit about what club level is. Different room types do fit into club level, so the room isn't necessarily like that kind of room might not be what you book when you're staying club level. There are lots of different options. However, when you stay club level, you are getting two very specific things. One is personalized service with the concierge, and two, probably the most important, is the club level lounge. Are we going? We're going. Okay, I haven't been yet. I'm very excited. So cool. Let's go. Now on our way up, we get to take the very fancy Coronado Springs elevators, which do not have buttons inside them. No, no, no. So make sure that you are checking because we did not earlier. Which elevator you're supposed to get in. Yeah. Not be, not that anybody, not that we did anything that got us trapped in an elevator for a while. No, no, no. We definitely weren't on level four and went to level nine. Well, we definitely didn't have to tell the elevator, please let us out. 15. See behind you. Ooh. 
There's an arrow pointing. <laughs> and you'll know which floor you're going to based on the little numbers on your phone. Yeah. We're in the elevator now. There's no, look, no buttons. No buttons. You call it outside and then it goes to the floor that you call it to. Help! <laughs> Sorry. We're headed up though to the 15th floor, which is where the Club Bubble Lounge is located at this hotel. Now in some of the Club Bubble hotels, the Club Bubble rooms will all kind of be on the same floor. And to get into the area of the Club Bubble room, you'll have to scan your key card. That is not the case here at Coronado Springs. Club Bubble rooms are spread out across the hotel. We are of course down on level four, um, but the lounge is right here, the Kronos Club. So here we are at the Kronos Club. You do need your key card to scan in. And then you can have it So the Kronos Lounge, like much of the rest of Grand Destino Tower, is based off of the short film Destino, which showcases the collaboration between Walt Disney and Dolly. Now, this hotel in general is kind of has a Spanish, just Latin theme in general, but Grand Destino Tower in particular is themed to that collaboration between Disney and Dolly. Um, and that is the story of Kronos. This is the Kronos Lounge. The lounge is accessible from 6.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. and there are food and beverage offerings throughout the day in here. Um, in addition, it's just a beautiful space that you can kind of relax with views, panoramic views of Hollywood Studios and app cut out the window. Thank you, Vanna. You're very backlit in here. Yeah, I know. So one of my favorite things about, um, well, I guess now the Kronos Lounge, but also one floor above us, which is the Dahlia Lounge, uh, you sometimes, if you can time it right, you can actually see uh, two of the fireworks uh, like happening at the exact same time, both over at Phantasmic uh, or... Um, uh, that way. Luminous or Epcot, which yep. is all the way over there. So that is something that you can aim to do when you're staying at a, a, the club level hotels is that you can come and watch the fireworks in the lounge at night with the uh, complimentary food and beverage that is in here. Now, the theming of this lounge, similar to the theming of the rest of the hotel, is not overly themed. You've got your hidden Mickey on the wall here, as well as a lot of those Spanish architectural touches around the interior design and the um, lounge in general. It's a very beautiful lounge, in my opinion, but it's probably not going to be the most exciting for kiddos. Now, something that I really love is that there are actually tons of books that you can borrow. This Art of Coco book? Are you kidding? Oh, that's cool. I know what I'm doing later. Looking at that. Or now. <laughs> <laughs> no time like the present, Quincy. No time like the present. The and all cool. of these books are just for you to peruse while you're in here. There's also uh, some more books over here that you can find. Um, on different subjects, the entire Narnia series, which this is not something that was at the Boardwalk Club level. The Boardwalk Club level was playing Disney movies, but outside of that, there wasn't like at least a ton of literature that I saw. Information boards around the lounge as well to let you know what's going on. And come check this out. Hang got, on, I got distracted. We got sidetracked. We got sidetracked. So this is the light snacks portion of the day. The majority of the actual day will be light snacks. It's from about 11 to 4 p.m. And we've got crudités as well as halved uncrustable. The most exciting snacks are kind of over here. We've got crudités with this ranch, which we will try because it looks really good. Apparently there's a thing about the ranch here. And the ranch is really good. I had it earlier. That I was I was doing a little thing like I had it, but I did. And yeah. it was really good. You know who, who I feel bad for right now? Who? Emma. Yeah, because she's they have, here. have to served on crustables. <laughs> Again, Emma's at a wedding. She's having a great time. But man, she could be here with us. She could be here having with us. Having those half... Uncrustables. Halved Uncrustables. Halved Uncrustables. Right, Uncrustables. Show, me the show me Okay, so they have board games in here. Another thing that I didn't notice at the Boardwalk oh. Inn. My goodness. You want to know something interesting about this? This is wild. I own this. You own this? This is a multi-hundred dollar clue board. Oh it's one of my prized possessions. I own this one. And they have it here. I've never seen it anywhere but my own house. But yeah, I love that they have these fancy board games in here. Scrabble. Fancy Scrabble. Scrabble. Now that you've seen the fancy clue, we can finish talking about the other options. We've got the Uncrustables here, the Crudités. And then over here, we've got Celebration Cookies that are packaged. You can just grab anything really and take it back to your room. Um, as well as some Blox Crackers, banana chips, pretzel rods, goldfish trail mix assorted chips now this is the lightest time of day you'll see the least number of like items in here some of the servings you can actually make into full meals particularly breakfast and the hors d'oeuvre serving we'll talk a little bit about, more about what the different servings of the day are and so you just have to try the ranch and i really need to see his reaction try the ranch and don't break the i just got a small plate see some little broccoli i think it's the best ranch i've ever had it's really it's good. It's so good. Why is it so good? I don't know. I think they're like made at house with like it's extra. It's really like buttery. Yeah, it's so good. I don't know what's in there. <laughs> toys. Oh, toys. And you said this so wasn't fun. kid friendly. No, I, I changed my mind. Look at the toys in there. The toys. Now everything in the lounge is complimentary, including alcohol. There's no alcohol out right now for self-serve, but you can request it any time of day. <laughs> I hate this thing. 
Oh, I, I knew it. I knew it <laughs> once you started. It's that it's that L. Right. Yeah, the L. That's how you win tic tac toe, kids. I'll be back. I'm gonna get more ranch. Okay. <laughs> I just want to touch on the fact that again, um, a huge part of when my family and I go on vacation, just because we love to eat and drink, the fact that this lounge is available to club uh, level. Uh, peeps are, it, it's a huge win, specifically on the alcohol front, because, uh, you know, I love the Dahlia Lounge, but a lot of the drinks are anywhere from 16 to sometimes $25. If you're staying in that $450 a night room, that's only like a hundred or, or so dollars upcharge, $150 upcharge from the non club level rooms, and you could make that money back by just eating breakfast and or dinner and getting a few drinks at the lounge each day. Absolutely. You can make that money back, so it could be a lot more worth it. We talked about this a little bit with the boardwalk one, where it's a bigger jump, harder to make worth it. Right. But in this case, I think a whole lot easier. I, I would book this specifically because of the perk of breakfast and dinner are included. And free alcohol. And free alcohol. Which is which is kind of unheard of, even when you think of Disney ships. Disney ships don't yep. even offer a drinking package. Yeah. Now, at Kronos Lounge, there's also beverages available, self-serve, pretty much all day. In the morning, you'll find juices, you'll find coffee, uh, pretty all day, the, the like latte machines and things like that. They have a fridge stocked with bottled waters, juices, fruit, and things like that that you can just grab and go. Um, and if there's anything that you see out at another time of day that you want to have, just ask the concierge staff. If you want to know what other options they have, just ask the concierge staff. They'll be happy to bring you orange juice no matter what time of day it is. Um, we went ahead and requested glasses of wine. Uh, we both got Chardonnay because Sage ordered Chardonnay and then I just... I'm not a red wine drinker. I drink whatever... Um... It's free. <laughs> I'll drink, I have my favorites. I'm, I'm a wine snob, but I don't like being a wine snob, so I just pretend I'm not a wine snob. Now to everybody who watches, who typically watches the videos, goes, what is Sage doing drinking wine? He says he does not drink wine and beer. I do drink the occasional wine when I... The I, vibe. When the vibe calls the vibe for it. calls for it. And also when I don't have, when I have to sing in a third in an hour. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Free stuff. And, uh... Yeah, we literally just asked for this. This is a good chardonnay. Yeah, it's not bad. It really is like, like apples. It's steel aged, not oak aged. I, I think it's plastic aged. <laughs> it's not plastic aged. It's plastic aged. It's like, you know, you know when you're tasting a fine plastic? It's over. <laughs> I, can't I can't believe we didn't take 16 of those Uncrustables. Before they oh, no. I bet we can ask. What time is it? Okay, so at 4 o'clock. Yeah, at 4 o'clock. The mid uh, light snack. The light snack ends. But that's very exciting because hors d'oeuvres and drinks is next, which is my favorite, well, was my favorite at Boardwalk. And yes. I'm very excited for it. There's hot food at hors d'oeuvres and drinks. Yep. You're going to miss this. Sucks I'll to see you. It, I'll see you tomorrow night. But I won't be here. Do you want to come tomorrow night? Maybe. <laughs> the invitation is always open. There's a clip of me being kept me here. Tomorrow. Hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, hors d'oeuvres and select beverages 5 to 7 p.m. That's what's starting next. Um, and I will see you then for us to talk a little bit more about uh, the dining in general throughout the day, when you can make a meal, when you can't, when it's probably worth stopping by the lounge, and when it's kind of just grab and go stuff. We'll talk a lot more about that. Now, as you can probably tell from the theming, Colorado Springs does cater to a different audience than most other Disney resorts. Yep. It caters to a more adult-based audience. It caters to a more business audience. There's sure. a very large convention center here at Coronado Springs that hosts a lot of conventions. And Grand Estino Tower, in particular, was built with that in mind. So this entire tower, the way the rooms are built, the way that all of the common spaces are. And it's, it's not just for third-party conventions like corporate people coming yep. in. A lot of times it's Disney-based conventions. Yeah, Coronado Springs has a little bit elevated offerings compared to the other moderates, especially at Grand Estino Tower, and it is the only moderate with club level. All the other club levels in Disney World are in the deluxes. So in that, like in this case, that's probably the business vibe is probably why there's even a club level here. Um, but that works great because it's a more affordable club level option. All right, say goodbye to Sage because he's abandoning us. You don't have to leave for I'm taking both of them. Hey! <laughs> and I'm going to go get some work done, but I will see you all at dinner at the orders and drink service. And you're not going to want to miss this. Thanks for letting me be weird, y'all. See you then. He'll be back in this video, but I won't see him ever again because I'm not speaking to him after this. Aww. Not after this transgression. <laughs> work done. Kind of. But it's time for dinner. Let's head up to the Kronos Lounge to see what's offered for orders and drinks, aka dinner.
Um, we'll see how full it is though. All right, we have got to the hors d'oeuvre service. Now there's enough, I think, to make a dinner here. We've got their kids offering of the night, which is uh, beef marinara with pasta. They have vegan friendly Parmesan cheese. They also have some more exciting offerings like scallops essabeche with sweet peppers, which looks amazing. I can't wait to try it. And then lots of little side offerings. They've got a red pepper gazpacho. They've got the citrus couscous, cheeses, meats, olives, uh, plenty to try. And to my delight, the crudités with the delicious ranch are back. So dinner looks pretty good. I think we should make a plate. Okay, plate acquired. Um, went with the, just like basically the full spread except for the kids stuff, which is gonna be my second course. Don't worry about it. Um, got my favorite ranch again on some broccoli, all little, little, little bites. The gazpacho, the couscous, the scallop. Let's give it stuff to try. I also, and it's been a few hours, but I got another glass of wine. This time I got one that just had a clear label. It smells like a Pinot Gris. I think it's a Spanish wine though. Ooh, that is tart. This is a big glass. Eating time. Starting with the scallops, I'm so curious. You have to love scallops to like this. If you like like scallops when they're saucy or when they're with other stuff, but not on their own, this is a very like scallop forward dish. Chilled, cold scallop, that nice red pepper swirl on top. Just those classic shellfish flavors, not overly fishy, very high quality scallop well cooked, shockingly good for getting off of a little, you know, a little hot plate, or cold plate. This ranch is life changing. Can you smell getting the recipe? Insanely flavorful, unique options. The food for the couple of lounge is obviously made in the kitchens of the restaurants here. Most likely the kitchen of Toledo, which is a restaurant I do love. High quality ingredients, really unique flavors. I would say that with any club level lounge, you're not gonna get a lot of options. Like I basically have a plate of everything they have, it's not that much. Um, and there always will be like a kid's option. So tonight it's those spaghetti and meatballs that'll be a little bit safer for picky eaters and for kids. But when you get the club level lounge, you get that complimentary food, it's really awesome. You're just not getting a ton of options. So something to weigh. I'm very happy with this. This is definitely enough to be dinner for me between this and the second plate of spaghetti I'm about to get. Um, and I'm a happy camper. And I'm obsessed with this range. So we're gonna talk specifically about this lounge, although I noticed the times are the same or very close to the ones that we had at Boardwalk. So the first thing that will happen is from 6.30 to 7 a.m. there will be coffee. Um, coffee will open up very, very early, but it will pretty much just be coffee. At seven, things really kick in with the continental breakfast. Now, I know that here they do have hot breakfast. Sage, you will have already seen it. Sage just checked it out. So hopefully breakfast was delicious. That is from seven to 10.30 a.m. From 11.30 to four, we have the light snacks course, which is what you saw with us earlier. Little grab and go snacks, goldfish, crustables, that kind of thing. Then we head into hors d'oeuvres and select beverages from 5 to 7 p.m. That's going to be your dinner, your heftiest meal of the day. Breakfast and dinner are both hefty. And then we head into our final, which is what we're about to do, desserts and cordials from 8 to 10 p.m. Um, I really enjoyed getting desserts and cordials when I was at the Boardwalk Club level. It felt very fancy. It felt very relaxing in the evening to just be able to, like, put a little bit of Kahlua in my coffee, have a dessert. And a mini bar! This is another thing about club level is they offer have ice cream treats. Um, last time Emma and I requested Mickey bars, they were out, so they gave us um, Mickey ice cream sandwiches. But this time they had Mickey bars, so I'm having a Mickey bar as my final dessert option. But while I have my Mickey bar, we can talk a little bit about if this is worth it. So, is Club Level at Coronado Springs worth it? Good morning. This is, uh, I guess, morning one for me at uh, the Coronado. Uh, as far as bed science goes, not bad at all. Uh, we both ended up, both my wife and I, we were here. I think we kind of like crashed around 1, uh, 1 a.m. And because of those amazing blackout curtains, we just closed them. And I, we didn't set our alarms because we didn't have Violet with us. So we just kind of woke up whenever our bodies said so. And that was 8.30, which is kind of, and it sounds early. Uh, but it's it's not super early for us, especially if you're staying at Disney Park. Um, that's 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 early 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 entry for most people. Uh, so today our plan is to 
uh, actually hang out by the pool. Uh, we're gonna go get breakfast at the club lounge because it is free. Uh, we got free mimosas, free coffee. We're gonna check out the club lounge and uh, keep on enjoying this uh, club level experience. But so far, day one. We have our eggs, we have our Spanish potatoes, we got some bacon, a croissant, and assorted fruit, which I believe uh, is mostly comprised of melon, a cantaloupe, melon, some grapes. Uh, and then <laughs> selfishly, I got Cinnamon Toast Crunch because it's been a long time since I've had Cinnamon Toast Crunch and it was available. So, I mean, why not? I would just because that's my morning uh, treat yourself and some sparkling water. And this is where you can find your assortment of pastries, uh, cereal, eggs, bacon, hash browns, and of course, your coffee machines over here. Now, unfortunately, uh, you know, a big selling point to Quincy was <laughs> unlimited pog juice in the club level lounge for the boardwalk uh, club level. Not the case here. <laughs> uh, orange juice and cranberry juice. Uh, and then they have this, uh, your vending machine, which I don't know if you guys know this about me, but I'm a huge apple juice fan, especially after a long night. Um, I, I, apple juice is the one thing I crave. I don't know what it is. But they've got apple juice. I know that's for the kiddos, but it's also for me. So there we go. So far, loving the club level experience. Takes me right back to my childhood. The tiny bottles of Tabasco. Love it. Breakfast duty montage. Okay, so right next to this amazing view, this window view, you see Tower of Terror, you see Batu. Uh, all the way to our left is Epcot, all the way to our right is uh, Animal Kingdom. But I mean, like, this is a pretty spectacular view. I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with a review about typical breakfast foods that you can find anywhere on Disney property. Overall, it's a solid breakfast. It's eggs, it's potatoes, it's bacon, it's a croissant, and it's fruit. Okay, hold it, stop everything. I did just talk to a cast member and you can get a hog juice mimosa here in the club uh, level lounge. So if you're getting a pog juice mimosa, uh, that means unlimited pog juice. It might not be you know, readily available to you, but you can still ask a service. So this still counts, Quincy. This still counts. Here's your pog juice mimosa, cheers. It's the final morning for me here at club level, the Kronos Lounge at Coronado Springs. Um, the, the big thing that I wanted to say before I leave the Kronos uh, Lounge, or the club level lounge, is that uh, the very last day of your checkout, if you are in club level, you actually have access uh, until 10 o'clock that night. So even if your checkout is at 11 o'clock, you still have access to the club level lounge until 10 o'clock at night to enjoy. And they say, you know, just drop your luggage off with bell services uh, once you check out. And, but you, this, is, this is yours for the entire day, still on the day of your checkout. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out is that they actually have a rotating breakfast, which I did not know. So uh, there's actually some different bref uh, breakfast selections. There's uh, mm -hmm. simple di differences. There's not, it's not just bacon and eggs again. It's bacon, but now they have like cream cheese with ghost pepper jelly on top. It's very interesting. But well, overall, my club level experience was awesome, especially as a first timer. I definitely like, I will look forward to the time that I get to do it again. Uh, my only thing is that I agree with Quincy, and I'm gonna, I'll say with my chest, if you are a, attempting to have a busy, busy park day, club level is probably not for you. If you're gonna have more of a, of a chill, a chill park experience, a chill resort, resort experience, this would be what I would do. So enjoy your time, if you're doing club level, enjoy it, enjoy the amenities, take advantage of it. You're spending the money, so use it. All right, I don't know where we're in the video, but maybe back to Quincy, or maybe this is the end, I don't know, but I, First club level down, check, good. See you guys on the next club level because I'm only doing club level now, forever. So. Please excuse the mood lighting. I am here, uh, it is currently uh, 8.24. I'm in the Kronos Lounge because it's time to see the fireworks. Now, there are two different fireworks uh, at the time of filming. You can see there is the movie Magic at Hollywood Studios as well as Fantasmic. They're both starting at 8.30 tonight, so that, that's two fireworks shows you can see. And at nine o'clock, Luminous over at Epcot, which is just that way. Uh, so that's three fireworks, uh, fireworks shows within the matter of, uh, you know, 30 minutes that you can see, which is pretty incredible. We're gonna see, uh, we're gonna see from the Kronos Lounge. Let's enjoy the show. Oh, that's just a reflection. We'll see it in a second. Now I have been in here for a little while and once eight o'clock hit, they actually dimmed all the lights. Uh, because I am a club level newbie, I do not know if they're going to kind of dim the lights even further once the fireworks start. I would say, I'm pretty positive it's a hard no, uh, because they don't do it in the Dahlia Lounge either. Um, but we will see what happens.
Okay, so real talk, it's not the best view. <laughs> um, it is, you're very far away. They don't dim the lights. You've got to kind of press your face up against the glass because the reflection is a lot. Uh, they just look like little sparks in the distance. With that being said, I'm a very spoiled individual who I get to see, I get to see these fireworks every day. Um, so uh, take that for what it's worth. As amazing as the club level is, I would say, uh, you know, finish up here, go up to the Dahlia Lounge, uh, and see the fireworks from there because it's a lot. It's a much clearer view. I think it depends, which is always going to be the answer. And I know it's boring, but it's true. It depends on who you are. If 450 500 700 dollars a night for a hotel isn't crazy for you then absolutely maybe opt to stay here and get that club level instead of one of the more expensive hotels that those base rooms are going to be that price anyway even if you're not planning on spending that much per night in a hotel maybe you're more of an all-star kind of person i get it me too this might still be worth it for you i'll explain why you could stay most of the nights of your trip at an all-star at an off-property hotel somewhere where you're spending 100 to 200 dollars a night something more reasonable and then the last one night two nights of your trip you could book a club level room at coronado springs or even one of the deluxes if you really wanted to splurge and spend the time at your hotel enjoying the amenities enjoying the pool all that stuff that you can see on my full coronado springs tour and also getting really amazing concierge service, a luxury kind of experience, free alcohol, free Mickey bars, all the free food that you've seen us have on this video. And that could pretty much pay for the upcharge of the hotel and give you kind of a relaxing into your vacation after some really busy park days. In my opinion, I think for your average Disney goer, it's going to be hard to justify club level, even at Coronado Springs where it's a lot cheaper for every single night of the trip. But you could always do one night or two nights in club level, get those perks a little bit and have just a wonderful time. Also, if you're already planning on spending 400 plus dollars per night on a hotel, you're looking at those deluxe level hotels. Maybe instead of going deluxe, consider going club level at a moderate. And I'll tell you the club level compared to the boardwalk club level, almost no different. There are marginal differences. Like they have games and puzzles here that they didn't have at boardwalk. The alcohol was more self-serve at boardwalk versus here. I think I liked the desserts a little better at Boardwalk, but like it's, it's marginal. Like it's like, there's some stuff this one does better, some stuff the Boardwalk done, one does better. Both have impeccable service and the Boardwalk one is several hundred dollars more expensive. There are lots of other club levels in Disney World. We've done Boardwalk, we've done Coronado Springs. What does Grand Floridian look like? What does Polynesian look like? Wilderness Lodge, that's the next cheapest. If you like to see any of these, let me know which ones you want to see in the comments and we will try our best to go check them out. If you like this video, go ahead and like it, subscribe. And now go watch Em and I tour Club Level at Disney's Boardwalk and Resort. I'll but, see you there. But does she do robe signs?